Welcome back, Sergey fans. Natalie is a Don Airman, your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have another exhibition match 400 versus North Shilling G on Titan Duel. 400 going for the Cloaky Bot Factory, and North Shilling G going for Rovers, which is a little bit surprising. We're seeing the Cloaky Factory. Not a bad choice. I mean, you do have Glaives, they move pretty fast. Very quickly going for Glaive Imp, which makes a lot of sense. Imps are pretty good at dealing with vehicles coming in, and 400 is probably expecting vehicles to be a very early feature of the game. At the same time, going for a right off the bat Reaver, which is interesting. Looks like 400 is trying to play this out a little more defensively. Use a few Glaive to scout out a little bit, maybe raid out a few Metal Extractors, but largely just play the defensive game. And then, I guess, just approach with Reavers? Like, I'm not, I'm trying to think of the motivation here because it's hard to really think about it. I mean, 400 is going for the Cloakybot Factory, which. I mean, the reason you'd go for that and not vehicles is for the early glaives and for the early assault potential. There's not a whole lot late game that Cloakybot Factory has. I mean, I guess you'd have Phantom to get rid of Dominatrix. That's an option. So there is that. Not sure that that's the actual idea. I'm just trying to think, like, what can you do with Cloaky that you can't do with vehicles? Phantom's a big one, honestly. Unless the idea was to possibly counter tanks. In which case, I could see what was going on to a small extent. But even then, that would still make sense with the Phantoms. Like, it's just it's harder to deal with tanks as as rovers. I can kind of see that Cloakies could maybe get in. Like, I mean, knights, sort of. Imps, sort of, if you have enough of them sides would bypass to an extent. Phantoms would be the be way to go. So there there are options if you're going for Cloakie against Tank. But it would still be a bit of a tricky situation. So yeah, 400 definitely going for an interesting choice. At the same time, North Chilean G is expanding moderately quickly. I feel like they're expanding a little bit slower than 400, but not by much. They seem to be a little bit more paranoid about being attacked, whereas 400 just playing almost entirely defense. They do have Reaver, or they have one Reaver coming in over to the north side of the map to try to make sure that nothing can expand over to the northeast and might be using that as a direct assault force. Won't be able to do much. On the other hand, there's the Scorchers coming in. The Imp firing off. Well, a little bit late, unfortunately. That's still 12 seconds left to get rid of this. So, okay, the Scorcher probably will die. Yeah, there it is. There's the Glaive coming in here, getting rid of that Scorcher. And, okay. That takes care of that. 400 at least defends relatively well, gets some reclaim off of it. But, as mentioned, North Chilean G is really starting to expand quite quickly. I mean, 400 relying a lot on that reclaim to get their economy back up. They only have the one worker heading out on the map. They have a second one, but mostly for energy production. North Chilean G might want to actually take advantage of that as well. They are kind of getting low on their power. And nothing is planned either. I don't think North Chilean G quite realizes just how low their energy values are. Same time, the Reaver coming in here basically unobstructed. And of course, over to the south side of the map. Two of the Masons being taken out by De This is huge! These Glaives taking out the Masons. That is going to completely wipe out North Chilean G's entire expansion efforts. 400 able to take full advantage of the Cloakybot Factory while at the same time going into a harass over to the north with the Reavers. That is going to give 400 the economic advantage, on top of the fact that North Chilean G currently doesn't have as much power, so they can't build as quickly as they'd like to. And it means that North Chilean G does not have any means of expansion other than their commander. Fortunately, they do lose the Reaver in the process, but ultimately, that was completely worth it. 400 able to basically take all map control going forward for the next five minutes. That could basically seal the game, honestly. Getting rid of those two Masons. I mean, the Commander is still expanding, so North Chilean G has a few options left. But now they've got to spend all this time rebuilding Masons. Now they've got to spend all the time to take to actually get over to the areas they were needing to expand to. And in all that time, 400 is going to be building up three or four Metal Extractors. Like, putting them ahead 10 Metal per second easily. So 400, very strong early play. And with nothing really responding to that either. I mean, they have a Reaver in place just in case the Scorcher decides to get a little bit too fresh. And, indeed, that Reaver being the threat it needs to be. That allows for another Metal Extractor to be constructed. And 400 really doesn't care. And, of course, they do have power production coming in. They weren't expanding as quickly as North Chilean G. But they did manage to get rid of the expansion efforts that North Chilean G had. Which means North Chilean G... 
They haven't even gotten back to their expansions yet. In fact, it looks like they're primarily focused on getting a little bit of power so they can actually start using the metal they already have that were accessed it. But it's not going to be enough so long as 400 is able to continue expanding unimpeded. Of course, North Chilean G, they could take out that Northeast Extractor set, or could take the Northeast Extractor set, which looks like that's what they're planning on doing. So it's not over yet, but 400 has definitely put themselves in a very strong position to try to make it over as quickly as possible. And North Chilean G, I'm not seeing a huge amount they have on the table to actually deal with this. They have two Reavers, and that is good. Considering the amount of Glaives coming in here from 400, I do think two Reavers is going to help, but it's not like they're all in position to deal with these Glaives, and it's not like the Glaives actually care. They're not even going for it. In fact, I don't think North Chilean G... No, they're not even close enough. 400 does see it, but 400 does not care. Just going straight in, taking out everything they can, taking on the pickets, taking on the metal extractors. I think this is going to be it. North Chilean G has basically nothing to defend against this. The Reavers are completely out of position, and 400 being clever as they can with making sure their Glaives are not getting anywhere near the Reaver that they lost. Dominatrix is coming in, but that is still not going to be able to get rid of these Glaives. The Ripper would be able to, but 400 again being very clever, being very attentive of their units, making sure they're not going to lose any of them. And successful raid is what results. Three metal extractors down, defenses in the center down, basically cracking open the entire center. The Stardust being the only thing that's going to be a problem. And it looks like, well, that's that's something that's known. That is a known threat. Although, unfortunately, the Glaives, nope, not falling for it. I was about to say, unfortunately, the Glaives are going to fall into the riots, but that is not going to happen. Instead, going to be able to get rid of these metal, these pickets, but there's the Stardust. Again, though, 400 paying very close attention. Some really nice micro coming out of them, and should we know, at the same time, they are still... They are still setting up somewhat. I mean, most of them are focused on micro, but they do have their economy already set up. They are not letting their base go to waste in the process. And they got this airplane plant as well, getting a few ravens on top of all that. So, some really nice micro from 400, get some multitasking as well. And that will mean they just don't lose any glaives, which is something you don't see very often. I know it sounds like I'm pointing out something trivial, but a lot of the time, players, and myself included, I tend not to pay as much attention as I should, don't micro units as well as they could. I mean, there's a lot of micro potential in this game, but it can be hard to take advantage of, partly because the units can be a bit of a pain when they're trying to do stuff on their own, and partly because it just sometimes feels like you're building units fast enough, it doesn't matter. But, nope. That is not happening here. 400 is taking full advantage of the units they have. Unfortunately, unable to get rid of the Mason, but still that Glaive able to deal some damage, but it's not nearly enough. At least some scouting was done. Some information was gathered. But that may not be all that was needed. May not matter, though. 400, and it won't matter, though. 400 doesn't have to worry about this. They have the Ravens up. They have the they have the Ronin getting rid of that one Stardust. Ravens should be able to help get rid of that Commander. And there it is. There's the Commander down. North Australian G losing any ability to expand over to the eastern side of the map. They've started rebuilding the expansions they lost about five minutes ago. But... That's not going to be enough. The Masons forced back once again as the Glaives are already in position. Already prepared to take care of all these Masons. Stop them from expanding again. And with the assault on all sides, North Australian G is making their last stand right now. They have the Reavers. They have the Rippers. They have a lot of Dominatrices just in case any heavy units come in. And this is a hell of a last stand. But of course, the Ravens are still up. They are still a thing. 400 still doesn't have an air pad, but even without the air pad, it's still... One good shot. Getting through, getting rid of the Dominatrices. That would still wipe out the vast majority of those re those Ravens. And on top of that, there are Ronin coming in here, which will take care of both the Levelers and the Reavers. Or sorry, the Rippers and the Reavers. But that's uh, still a question of positioning. Actually, it's very much a question of positioning. North Chilean G coming in here. And this force doesn't really have a whole lot that's getting in its way. Of course, the problem is if the Dominatrices go down to anything... That is a lot being lost in the process. Fortunately, the Dominatrices are being very effective at distracting forces coming in here from 400. And there's... Oh, there's, though, the Trump card coming in with the Ravens. Taking out one of the Dominatrices. Second Dominatrix will go down. And there's the Reavers back under 400's control. Able to start attacking from behind. And combined with the additional Raven support, this is going to be it. North Chilean G losing their one assault force that came in here. While at the same time... Harassment Force over to the north side of the map helps finish off everything as North Chilean G throws in the towel and 400 takes the game. So that was... 
a bit of a turnaround. But hey, that's how it goes sometimes. It's just games can be a little bit... A little bit like that, you know? So at this point, I don't really have any others lined up. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do now. Is there anything even... Oh, okay. Do one on Trojan Hills between Pet Turtle and Anir. That'll be the next one up, so stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes. More Pet Turtle, who is no longer watching the stream as far as I can tell. Although, admittedly, I really don't know because this way streams work, it honestly I have no idea who's watching or when, unless they're typing in the chat. Anyway, stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes. <laughs> 